Hello and welcome again to Snooker Pro Tips. Uh, this is another one off the Snooker Tips collection where he attempts to show you how to play the screw shot. Uh, he uses the green in his clip, uh, but for the purpose of uh, convenience I'm using the yellow on this one. But what I will do is set the shot at the same roughly. So he's got a half ball green, he has a half ball green to the corner, I've got a half ball yellow to the opposite corner. And what he attempts to show you is how to play the screw shot. Now, when he tells you how to play the screw shot, he first of all tells you to put your hand an inch or so closer. If he says you can't play the screw shot anyway, this putting your hand a little bit closer isn't going to make a lot of difference whatsoever. The fact of it is, it's a technical issue, and this is why you can't actually screw the ball. He also now tells you that once you're in this position now, to drop your thumb. The problem now with dropping the thumb is that the cue now is going to drop to one side of the cue ball or the other, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. This again is going to cause all sorts of problems. So now, how do, how do we screw the ball correctly and make it easy? Well, the first thing we're going to do, again for convenience, is just show you by potting, or attempting to pot this ball into the middle pot here and screw it back to start with. At the end of the clip, I'll perform the shot he performs in snooker tips. But the first thing is, and the major problem that people have when screwing a ball, is that they try and hit it too hard. I'll get the camera just to come in on the white, just so you can probably see where the tip of my cue is going to be. Now the problem most people have when they're playing this shot is they try and hit it too hard. This then causes the cue ball not to be struck in the correct place, via head movement, body movement, whichever it comes through from not hitting the ball too hard. Now a simple exercise now to help us screw the ball is this. It may not be the best uh, thing to look at but it definitely works. So the first thing we're going to do is just have the cue ball, no other balls at all on the table and we're going to aim at six o'clock on the white. And you see there that my tip now is at six o'clock on the cue ball. And all I'm going to do is just gently push the cue through. Nothing special in that. I'm just imagine you're thinking now there's nothing too special in that. Do this just two or three times, nice and low. Just float the cue through so as the cue ball comes back to you. Once you've done that two or three times, now accelerate through the cue ball just a little bit faster. So the cue is going nicely, pull it back nice and slow on the final backswing, and then just accelerate just that little bit more, hit through the cue ball. And do the same again. So we cue to it nicely, nice low backswing, and then we accelerate through a little bit more, a little bit harder, trying to keep the body still, trying to keep the head still, and in general just pushing through the white ball nicely. The one thing you will note now, that at no time, if I just go out a little bit so, so you can see just that little bit further, is my bridge slanting in any way. The only thing that I am doing is raising the bridge to play with top and just flattening the bridge out now to play with screw. The bridge hand is only being flexed by my fingers and my thumb isn't moving in any way, shape or form. My thumb is staying completely where it is. It's not being dropped at all, so now the cue is just getting up the central line of the ball. And the only thing I'm doing is just flexing my fingers, so I'm now just stretching them out slightly, and now I'm hitting the bottom of the ball. For the final shot now, of doing this routine, you'll strike the ball as firm as you can. So once again, make sure you've chalked up so you don't miss cue. Flex the fingers so we go nice and low, and we're keeping the thumb where it normally is, on the bridge. Get the cue going nicely. Bring back nice and slow, and then accelerate. Do this as many times as you feel necessary until you feel like you're ready to play the screw shot. So here we are again, nice and low, nice and slow, and a nice accelerate through. Try and keep everything nice and still. And now to the proof of the pudding. We put the ball back onto the spot here bring the white ring so it's not dead straight. So 
So it's just maybe three quarter or just that straight, so as we can do the important thing of it all. And get the cue through the ball, so now that we get the action on the white ball, and we get it to do this. Can you see there? Just screws back just nicely, comes to the back cushion there. Like I say, this may seem like a strange way of practicing it, but it definitely works. As long as you do what's, what's asked, get the cue going nicely, and on the final backswing, don't try and hit the cue ball too hard, and hit through. If you watch the Snooker Tips video, he doesn't actually explain to you how to go about it, or how to he's correcting somebody's faults. Now, obviously, I can't see the you, the viewer, who is attempting to play this shot, but what I do know from experience of coaching now for 12 years, as a, amateurs and professionals alike, the faults that occur. Now, some of the comments that are made, uh, one was made regarding the state of the cloth. The cloth is very important on a snooker table. Uh, one gentleman asked, does it matter if I play on a heavy cloth where it's very heavy and a woolen type cloth? Yes, it does. It doesn't make any difference what set of balls you use. He, he advises the, the young man to buy a set of RMF balls. After you've spent £80 on a set of RMF balls and you still can't screw the ball, then it's a technical fault. But also, what I will say is, the cloth certainly doesn't help. Uh, this is why uh, professionals always play on super fine match cloths. The reason that you and your club may be playing on one of these types of cloth is because they're cheaper, harder wearing and last longer. So now, as I said, what I'll finish off with now is the shot that he plays on snooker tips. Once again, we're about two to two and a half feet away. If you notice now, if I've got it in shot, you can see my hand. The thumb isn't dropped in any way, shape or form. And the only thing I'm doing now is just flexing the, the fingers on my bridge and not moving my thumb at all. Now the key to this, keep everything nice and smooth. Don't try and hit the cue ball too hard. Take the cue back nicely and then accelerate through. And although I've missed the yellow, you can see now that the wires has travelled to the top end of the table. I shall do that again just once more, just so as you can actually see that I do actually pop the yellow. Wasn't supposed to miss, but I fancy doing the double take. So just once more. I'll try to do it this time without talking. You see now the distance again is roughly the same, keeping the bridge the same, keeping the distance away from the cue ball the same, making sure now that I can pull the cue back and accelerate through the yellow ball. And once again now, let's see that the cue ball now goes all over the table. And hopefully I've explained there to you how to play a screw shot. If you have any comments on this shot, please feel free to leave them. Uh, please feel free to email. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. It's been an another Snooker Pro tip. Thank you.